Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kristen, and I am the education director here at Sea Turtle Inc. Sea Turtle Inc. is a nonprofit sea turtle hospital on South Padre Island, Texas. We do have a three tier mission here. We work to rescue and rehabilitate sick and injured sea turtles for release back out into the wild. We educate the public and we work towards conservation efforts for all marine turtle species. So today we are going to be talking about loggerhead sea turtles, but I want to give a second to allow a few more people to hop on our video. I see a bunch of you are getting on already. If you guys are watching, go ahead and type into the comment bar where you are tuning in from. We always love to see where you guys are watching us from. We get people all across the nation. We've had people overseas too. So that's always really exciting. We're happy that you guys are still hanging in here with us, learning about sea turtles. Um, one question that I know we're probably going to get multiple times in this video is if we are open to the public. Um, the answer is no. We are still trying to get everything in place to make it safe for our staff, volunteers, and visitors alike and help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Um, so we have not set a date yet as to when our facility will be open again. But as soon as we know, we will post that on our website as well as on our Facebook page. So I see a lot of you commenting. We have um, some people from Kentucky, lots of locals, McAllen, um, lots of Texas people, Fort Worth, Fredericksburg. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Uh, if you didn't get to already, go ahead and type where you guys are tuning in from in the comments. Um, so today... We are going to be talking a lot about loggerhead sea turtles. Um, so I have sitting in my lap right here a loggerhead sea turtle skull. So we're doing a little species highlight. Uh, loggerhead sea turtles got their name because they have really, really large heads. So I'm going to show you this skull that I have here to give you guys a good idea compared to me. This skull is pretty big. Um, this turtle was estimated to weigh around 300 pounds that this skull came from. It is a real sea turtle skull and we use this um, during our educational programs that we do in our amphitheater, um, different programs here at our facility as well as with our virtual learning programs. Um, so I see some questions coming in already. We have people watching from Europe, Dallas, California. Uh, let's see, Baltimore, Tennessee who is an SPI native. Um, we also see more California Corpus Christi. A uh, question coming in from Sherry was, do you have animal husbandry volunteering positions? Good question. Um, we do have a myriad of volunteer positions available, um, but chances are you will not be starting out doing animal husbandry. You kind of have to work your way up. So if you guys are interested in volunteering with our facility when we are open again to the public, feel free to hop on our website. Our volunteer coordinator's name is Mary Duncan. She's great. Uh, if you have any questions at all, a lot of that information can be found online. Our application is online, but you can send her an email directly and her email address is volunteer at seaturtleinc.org if you guys want that information. Um, so loggerheads got their name because they have really large heads like you guys saw with my skull. They have very powerful jaws. These turtles can bite down as hard as an American alligator. So some pretty good jaw strength with this particular species. And that has to do with what they eat. So if you guys have any ideas what a loggerhead sea turtle's favorite source of food is go ahead and type that into the comments I want to see what you guys think before I tell you the answer and I'm gonna answer some more questions that I see Brianna is asking would you guys do any virtual education programs for daycares yes um, so our virtual interactive virtual learning program um, it can be geared towards any age group we are still doing those right now for um, classrooms that are connecting from home we've done them for museums um, we are setting up in the process of um, getting ready to do some for summer camps in different areas so if you guys are interested or you know someone who might be interested in connecting with us for a virtual program all of that information is located on our website my email is on there as well so if you have any questions feel free to send me an email directly Directly. I'm going to take you guys out into our museum. Um, I see another question coming in. If we are open, no, we are not. Uh, we haven't set a date yet. We're in the process of getting all the things that we need to make sure our staff, volunteers, and visitors are safe and reducing the spread of COVID-19 when we do open again. So as soon as we have that date, we will let you guys know. So I see some guesses coming as to what loggerhead sea turtles like to eat. So let's see what everyone is saying. Squid, crustaceans, jellyfish, couple squid, shellfish, invertebrates, 
Let's see, crabs, smaller turtles, that's a good guess. Coral, I see Amber saying her eight-year-old son says fish, seaweed, more guesses for fish. So with those really powerful jaws, they have to have, they need those for what they eat. I'm gonna show you guys a picture of a loggerhead sea turtle here that we have in our museum. Now that powerful jaw strength that they have, the ability to bite down as hard as an alligator, they need that because their favorite source of food is actually shellfish. So clams, mussels, sea urchins, those sorts of things. So those powerful jaws help them break through those really thick shells to get to the meat on the inside. Now loggerhead sea turtles, here we have on our museum wall, let me back up a little so you guys can see, we have the five species of sea turtles that are found in the Gulf of Mexico. Loggerheads are not the biggest but they are not the smallest either they're kind of right there in the middle as you guys can see um, from this photo so they get to be around 300 pounds give or take pretty awesome turtles and we actually have a loggerhead sea turtle Fred who is one of our residents and I'm going to take you guys outside towards our turtle tanks right now and hopefully I can get some good um, a good view of Fred for you guys so you get an idea as to what a loggerhead looks like um, here on the screen. Now some of you might be wondering if we have nesting loggerheads here in this area. Now our main species that we see nesting on our beaches are Kemp's Ridleys but occasionally we do get loggerheads come up. Um, they wouldn't be nesting this early in the year that would be later in the season so who knows nesting season is going really well right now so we might get lucky and get some loggerheads here on South Padre Island too. So I see a question coming in. Will you ship items from the gift shop? I love your coffee cups. Um, everything that is available, well, not everything, but we do have quite a few things in our online store. I don't believe coffee cups are up there because we have not found a good way to ship them without them breaking. Um, but we just hired somebody new to work our online shop um, and hopefully she'll be adding some new products up there in the future. So I'm gonna spin the camera around because Fred is hanging out right here by the window, which was pretty lucky. Uh, Fred is our resident loggerhead sea turtle. Now I want you guys to go ahead and guess, how much do you think Fred weighs? I'm gonna back up so you can see his full body. Now remember, loggerheads can get to be around 300 pounds, give or take. So how much do you guys think Fred weighs? Fred is fully grown. He might grow a little bit more, um, but he is a, one of our largest turtles that we have here at our facility. He's kind of swimming there, so I'm gonna go around the side and get a better angle, and if I have to, I'm going to go up top which I might actually do. So I see some guesses coming in. Um, some guesses, Christina is guessing Fred weighs 120 pounds. Belinda says 215. Let's see, Sherry says 225. Kelly, 190. Susan, 210. You guys are all guessing right around the same size. Martha guessed 350. Some more guesses for 250 from Brianna. Fred is actually, let's see, oh, Clarice says 375. I'll give you guys a few seconds to get your guesses in before I tell you the answers. <laughs> Kimberly says 285, Tina is 275, sorry I'm crawling through all this stuff. Uh, Rocky says 198. Fred is actually 220 pounds. So he is a really, really large turtle. I'm above um, on our catwalk that's above his tank now so you guys can get a good view of what Fred looks like. Good guesses guys. 220 pounds is how much this big guy weighs. Now does anybody know how to tell if Fred is a male or a female? If you do, go ahead and type those comments into the comment bar. I see a question from Valerie, is Fred well? That is a good question. Um, Fred is one of our resident turtles and he is very healthy, yes. So here at Sea Turtle Inc, we are a sea turtle hospital. So most of our turtles um, are being treated so they can be released back out into the wild. But our residents live here full time for various reasons. So Fred was actually entangled in fishing line and ended up losing a flipper. Now he's going under the catwalk here so let me see if I can get a better view his head is starting to poke out so I'm gonna stay on this side um, he was entangled in fishing lines so he ended up losing that flipper there on the front 
left, if he comes a little bit more, you guys will be able to see that really well here in a second. Um, he did strand on the beach on the upper Texas coast and he was treated, his injuries completely healed. He did get released back out into the wild, but he ended up washing up on the beach two more times after that for a total of three. And because of that, he was deemed non-releasable. Fred does have issues with his eyesight, so he struggles to see. Um, he also has problems hunting. So that is why he lives with us full time now. Now I saw a bunch of you commenting that the way to tell is by looking at his tail. For everyone that said tail, good job. You can tell that Fred is an adult male loggerhead sea turtle because he has a very, very long tail, which I can show you guys right over there. You guys can spot that tail really well. He is making his way under the platform. All right, let me see if I missed any questions. So Christina is asking, is he the one that has a custom flipper? That is a good question. No, he is not. That is actually Allison. Um, Allison is an Atlantic green sea turtle and she does swim with the help of a prosthesis. The reason she has a prosthesis though is because she is missing three out of her four flippers. With Fred only missing one, um, he does struggle to swim at times, but he gets along fairly well with his other three. Now you guys will notice that it looks like Fred is attempting to swim, but he's not really moving a whole lot. All of our tanks do have um, currents in them because we want to simulate an ocean environment as best as we can and we want to make sure that all of our sea turtles are keeping up their muscle strength. Um, it also helps with oxygenation in the water and that sort of thing. So Fred is actually swimming against the current right now which is why he's not moving very quickly. <laughs> If you guys do have questions, feel free to type them into the chat box and I will answer them, or into the comment bar, I will an answer them as I see them pop up. Um, one of Fred's favorite, ooh, Christina, we're talking about food. She's asking, do y'all feed live caught food? Uh, that is a good question. So since Fred has issues with his eyesight, we will catch crabs for him, um, but to his benefit, we will actually pull the claws off um, because we wanna make sure he doesn't get hurt since he does have a couple of issues. But with our patients, we will catch live prey for them as well. Uh, specifically, loggerhead and Kim Ridley patients, we will catch crabs and leave their claws on and we know that if that turtle is able to successfully hunt in our tanks in our hospital we know that that patient's gonna do totally fine out in the wild good questions hi Tom from Rockwall it's your birthday sometime soon I know so happy early birthday if it is early Tom is one of our um, longtime supporters a question from Joe, what do you feed Fred? We feed Fred a mixture of seafood. So all of our turtles get a mix of mackerel, which is a type of fish, shrimp, as well as squid. And how many turtles do we have right now? So right now we have five residents that live here full time. Um, and they're all in these tanks that are all around me. So right now I'm in our education center. Um, but over in our hospital, I believe we have around eight patients, if I'm not mistaken. I know we've gotten in a new one, so don't quote me on that number. Um, but we don't have a whole ton of patients right now because we were able to release quite a few of them back out into the wild. Uh, Rocky is asking, what is the largest resident turtle you have? Fred is one of them, <laughs> good question. So Fred and Jerry both weigh 220 pounds. A question from Glenda, is his shell dirty? So if you guys look at Fred, you'll notice he has kind of a mottled looking shell there. Loggerhead sea turtles are more brownish in color than green sea turtles, and their shells look a little bit different. They don't have that beautiful pattern on them or anything like that. Um, their coloration kind of starts to go away a little bit the more that they age. Uh, out in the wild, one cool thing about loggerhead sea turtles is they can actually carry ecosystems on their shells. So we have gotten loggerheads in our hospital before, and when we bring them into our clinic, we will start pulling things off of their shell. It could be algae. We found little crabs. Um, we've seen leeches. We've seen barnacles. 
all kinds of things will live on the back of loggerhead sea turtles out in the wild. Fred shell is clean. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, the coloration, it's just a little uh, mottled like that because the upper keratin layers are starting to peel since he's a little bit older. Good question. Uh, for everybody asking about pricing in the gift shop, if you guys visit our online store, it is on our website, seaturtling.org forward slash shop. All the prices are listed on there. I do not know those off the top of my head. Uh, let's see. Is Fred shy? This is a question from Amanda. He's always seems to be hiding between the windows when I stop by to see him. Um, I don't think shy would be a good way to put it, but he has certain areas of his, of his tank that he really prefers. So sometimes he spends a lot of time by the window, like you see him doing right now, and other times he likes to stay at the back of his tank. Hey, Lauren. <laughs> Uh, I see Manny is tuning in from El Paso. Let's see, Rocky, have you ever had a leatherback turtle on South Padre Island? I'm gonna spin the camera around because I'm actually gonna make my way um, back off of this catwalk and try and get down there in front of the window so you guys can see Fred. So to our leatherback question, uh, we typically don't see leatherback stranding here in Texas. They don't nest here either, but I believe it was back in 2017 or 18. I can't remember the year right now. Uh, we did have a leatherback strand here on South Padre Island, and it was the first time a live leatherback had stranded in Texas in almost two decades. So that was pretty cool. Half of our staff had never seen a leatherback before. Um, unfortunately, that turtle did have a big boat strike in the top of her skull, so she didn't make it. She ended up passing away after about two days. Unfortunately, animals of that size, we estimated that this turtle was over 600 pounds. Um, just like whales or dolphins, by the time they get that close to shore where they're washing up, they've been in rough shape for a really long time. Um, so that's the only leatherback sea turtle whew, since I've been here for sure, but in quite a while that we've had here on South Padre Island. But one of our volunteers, um, her husband was out boating not too far offshore, about a mile, two miles out into the Gulf, and he spotted a leatherback out there swimming. So they do migrate through this area. If you guys are offshore, keep your fingers crossed. Maybe you guys will get lucky and see one too. So I am outside uh, Fred's tank. So let me spin the camera around. Lauren's asking, how do you tell if he is a boy? How do you know if he's a boy? So for all of you that answered that question earlier, I'm gonna quiz you again. Go ahead and type those answers into the comment box. How do you guys know that Fred is a boy? I wanna see what you guys said. Let's see, what other questions do we have? Do you see turtles ever bask in the sun? Um, in some locations, so here in Texas, we don't typically see turtles coming up to bask. They will come to the surface of the water though. Um, over in Hawaii, we get a lot of people that come in that say, oh, in Hawaii, I saw the turtles coming up to lay on the beach and get sun. That's one of the few places in the world where they will do that. Let's see, yes, I see a couple of you commenting. Um, the way to tell is by looking at his tail. Good job, guys. And you can tell that Fred is a male because he has that really long tail. All right, let's see, a question from Christina. Uh, when you have a female resident, do you give them the opportunity to nest just like in their natural habitat? Also, what is your turtle capacity at Sea Turtle Inc.? Uh, I'm going to try and follow Fred for you guys here. Uh, so it is actually illegal to breed sea turtles in captivity in the U.S. So we do have, let's see, three female resident turtles that live here full time. Allison, Merry Christmas, and Hang Ten will never breed since it is illegal in the United States. Um, a lot of people ask why, and to be honest, Honest. Sorry, I'm trying to get a good view for y'all. Um, to be honest, I haven't found a definitive answer, but my best educated guess, oh, here's Fred. My best educated guess would be that their mating process is so complicated. These turtles mate out in the water. Um, they have to come up onto the sand to lay their eggs. That would be really hard to replicate in captivity. Um, depending on where you go, there have also been issues in the past with organizations putting up a front per se, saying that they're there for conservation when they're actually just breeding turtles for profit. Uh, so I believe that has something to do with it as well. So no, none of our females will ever be bred. Good questions, guys. Is the bottom of their shell curved? Yes, so that's another way to tell 
the males, sorry, there's a glare here, um, but their plastron, that lower portion of their shell, will actually have a curve. That goes for sea turtles, as well as turtles that live on land and our freshwater turtles. Fred is not cooperating with me now, guys. Um, but that is another way to identify the male. So if you're underneath the turtle, that'd be a good way to look, but the easiest thing is to look for that tail. I see Patty hopping on again, Miss Gorman from California. She is our um, uh, rehab assistant, uh, Chris, his mom. So thank you so much. We always see your name popping up on our lives. So we're really excited that you're able to stay connected. Uh, we are gonna be doing another Facebook Live with Chris soon. So you'll be able to watch that too. Lauren's asking, how often does Fred eat? We feed him once a day. So their diet is based on the size of the turtle. Sometimes our turtles will get a little chunky, so we might have to put them on a diet. Other, right now though, our residents are, at, um, are on a diet where we're maintaining their weight since they're all doing pretty well, they're all healthy. Uh, I see a comment from Ines saying, please tell the story about the sunglasses. So, when we were back in our old building, before we opened this facility, since Fred's behind that wall again, I'm just gonna spin my camera around. Um, but before we moved over here, for those of you that have been at Sea Turtle Inc. in the past, before our expansion, um, our tanks, visitors can go right up to the edge, look in the water. Um, now we've kind of given the tanks space because we've had a lot of issues with things unintentionally ending up in them, the turtles accidentally eating them. So what Inez is referring to is that there was a time many years ago where visitors actually dropped their sunglasses in Fred's tank and Fred ate them. <laughs> so he had to go in for surgery to have those sunglasses removed. Luckily, all is well. No more sunglasses inside Fred. Uh, so now we have tanks that are quite a bit taller. So we don't really have issues like that so much anymore. Every once and again, something will end up in a tank that shouldn't be there, but not as often as in the past. Good question. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to catch up on y'all's questions here. Uh, Stephanie's asking, how long has your longest resident lived with you? I remember meeting several turtles back in the early 70s. So our two of our residents that have been here the longest are Jerry and Merry Christmas. Um, they have been here since the days of Isla at her house. So she's, they started out quite small. Now those turtles are over 40 years old, if I'm not mistaken. So they usually don't hang out by the glass that much. So I can't really show you them. Um, but if you guys want to see jerry and merry christmas we do have photos on our website as well as on our facebook page jamie is asking will you be open june 24th 1st to 25th hopefully uh again i don't know the answer to that we don't have a date set yet as to when we are opening to the public as soon as we know we will post that on our facebook page as well as on our website uh again for the question that just came in if we're gonna be open this weekend no we are not we know that Lots of people are heading this way for Memorial Day weekend. Please, guys, maintain social distancing. Try and do everything you can. Just because the weather is nice and things are starting to open does not mean that we are not in a pandemic anymore. So keep that in mind. Keep yourselves, your families, as well as everyone else safe. I'm going to go ahead and spin the camera so you guys can see Fred one more time before I end our little Facebook Live here. Um, you guys, again, for those of you that hopped on late, you'll notice that Fred is swimming into the glass over and over again. Um, there is a current in our tank, so he's actually swimming against the current. <laughs> oh, no, big guy's hiding now. All right. I'm gonna spin the camera around one more time. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us this afternoon. We are gonna be doing a Facebook Live again in two days. So Sunday, we're gonna be feeding some of our turtles. I believe I will be doing that one again. So we're gonna be feeding the turtles for you guys. Feel free to hop back on on Sunday. Uh, that's gonna be at 10 a.m. Uh, we have lots of more, lots more lives planned since we are not open to the public, so feel free to keep hopping on. Thank you guys so much to, uh, for your support during these trying times. I see a lot of you have donated to our cause already. If you guys are interested in that, you can donate on this video or on our website. We have lots of things going on on our website too. Um, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you guys. We hope to be open soon so we can get you guys back in here enjoying the turtles. Bye guys. Have a great day and happy Memorial Day weekend.